Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for gathering with us this morning. Uh, on behalf of the Herring family, Pastor Samantha, myself, Annabelle, Andrew, and our dog, April, Merry Christmas. Praise the Lord. Uh, we're excited to be able to gather with you this morning online and share the Word of God with you. God has a great message in store. Let's pray as we get ready to get into the Word of God. Father, we thank you and praise you, Lord, for the Lord Jesus Christ and the gift that he is to us and our lives every single day. Father, we thank you and praise you for your faithfulness, your goodness, your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for thinking through my mind, speaking through my mouth this morning. Thank you, Father, for helping us learn the principles of your word, apply the principles of your word, walk in the fullness of your blessing, and be used to the fullest extent that we can be used by you, Father. And we praise you and thank you, Lord, for just your grace and favor on our time together. We love you, we praise you, and we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, if you have your Bibles this morning, let's go to Luke chapter 4. Actually, Luke chapter 2, Luke chapter 2. And we'll read uh, Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. <clears throat> and it says, And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. Uh, this census first took place when Quirinius was governor of Syria, or governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth in Judah, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house of the lineage of David. <clears throat> and he went to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was, while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now <clears throat> there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be for all people. There is born uh, to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Amen. Thank you that Christ, thank you, Lord, that Christ the Lord is our Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. And you know, I want to read that to you. And <clears throat> often we read that portion of scripture at this time of year because it talks about the birth of Christ. And at Christmas, we celebrate the birth of Christ. Um, but you know, when we read this passage and really when we look at, you know, Christmas cards that have a nativity scene or we look at a nativity scene itself, uh, sometimes driving down the road now at night, you know, people have their Christmas decorations and you can see a nativity scene. And so we can have a romanticized or idealized picture of the first Christmas, right? We can think, well, this must have been just a wonderful event when everybody was joyful and there was no stress, there was no problems uh, going on. But actually, when you look <laughs> at the event of the first Christmas and the birth of Christ, <clears throat> leading up to that, there was a ton of stress going on, a ton of stress, right? And this morning, I want to take you back to that day when Jesus was born, the very first Christmas. It did not start out as a very merry time. It didn't start out as a very merry time. Uh, the news that Jesus was coming brought some stress, <laughs> right? <clears throat> the very first Christmas, before that very first Christmas, was a stressful time. Uh, first of all, let's let's step into a couple of people's shoes. First of all, let's step into Mary's shoes, right? An angel appeared to Mary, who was not married. Mary was not married and said she was going to give birth to, to the Son of God. And can you imagine what she must have been thinking when that instruction came? First of all, she's thinking, uh, how's this going to happen, right? <laughs> I have not, have not been with a man. I've not known a man. How's this going to happen? And then she began to think, what will everyone think? What will my brothers and sisters think? What will my parents think? Oops, what will Joseph think, right? Um, and no doubt Mary was worried. No doubt Mary was confused and probably afraid, right? And she didn't know if her engagement was going to end. Um, and she didn't know if her life would end, right? And so her future seemed bleak, uh, bleak at that moment. Well, Think about Joseph for a second. What about Joseph? Well, he must have been hurt. He must have been brokenhearted, right? He is, his fiance just told him that she was pregnant and he knew he was not the baby's daddy. Who the baby daddy is? I don't know, but it ain't me, right? 
And then to add, to add more pain to it, when he asked her about it, she says, well, it was an immaculate conception. Okay, yeah, right, right? Well, Joseph, no doubt, felt confused. He felt hurt. He felt cheated on. He felt betrayed, right? Well, <clears throat> what about the shepherds we read in the account in Luke chapter 2? Uh, <clears throat> the Bible says, you know, they're keeping the sheep, and at night, all of a sudden, they saw a bright light, and they saw a host of angels. And the Bible says that they were astonished, and it says they were greatly afraid. They were greatly afraid, right? Uh, and then what about the wise men? <clears throat> well, the wise men <clears throat> were exhausted, right? They took a long journey. They were ready to rest. They did what came a long way to see Jesus, right? <clears throat> well, <clears throat> when we see these nativity scenes and things, it's interesting because we can have like a romanticized or ide idealistic view of what happened on that first Christmas. But you know what? Not only do we have a romanticized idea of the first Christmas, we can have a romanticized idea, right, of Christmas today, right? And so, you know, we sing the song, tis the season to be jolly, right? Tis the season to be jolly. When actually we could just sing it, tis the season to be busy, tis the season to be stressed, tis the season to be annoyed, Tis the season to be betrayed. Tis the season to be grouchy, to be tired, to be angry, to eat too much and feel like a stuffed turkey, right? Uh, those are some of the realities. And so we can all experience holiday stress, right? Now, there's things that can contribute to the stress that we experience at the holidays. What are some of the things that can contribute to stress, right? And then we'll talk about some of the remedies for that. Number one, number one, unrealistic and romanticized ideas about the holidays can contribute to stress. Stress, unrealistic and romanticized ideas about the holidays. You know, Hollywood presents the picture-perfect Christmas experience, right? But that does not exist, right? Uh, <clears throat> we think, hey, we're going to have our house is going to be spotless for guests coming. Our car is going to be clean. We're going to have perfectly cooked meals with no problems. It's going to be the best dish we ever ate. Everybody's going to get along. Nobody's going to act in the flesh. And the gifts are going to be perfect. And they're going to be miraculously lapped to wrapped to perfection and placed under the tree. And everyone's going to be sitting on the couch in their pajamas, sipping on some cocoa. Right? <laughs> right? Well, even though we may have some moments like this, certainly every moment is not going to be like that. And we have to be careful not to develop unrealistic expectations regarding the holidays, right? And sometimes we can have this idea of when we're having maybe some drama, some problems, or things aren't working out, we can think, well, everybody else is having a great time. Well, everybody has challenges, right? Everybody ha has challenges, right? And we don't all just have a wonderful experience at every single moment, right? And so we have to have some realistic expectations about the holidays. Uh, number two, <clears throat> what else can contribute to stress? <clears throat> well, missing someone that was here last year during Christmas. You know, my mother and my grandfather both went home to be with the Lord this past year, my mother and my grandfather. And, you know, uh, certainly I'm thankful that they are in heaven. Certainly I'm thankful they're healthy and whole and they're cheering us on, running our race from the grandstands of heaven. But the reality is, we miss them. I miss them. My family misses them. We won't be able to experience this Christmas with them. And so there's there's a hole there, right? And so it's not just people that have, uh, you know, somebody transitioned to heaven or is not here on earth with us anymore. Uh, but sometimes people have unfortunate things. They experience divorce. And those, so there's family splits. Sometimes families move and may be in a different part of the country. Or sometimes people are deployed in the military. Right. So there can be separation that causes stress during during this time as well. That can that can add to some of the stress we feel at Christmas. Number three, um, we can is the overall hecticness of the holidays can be a contributing factor to our stress. Right. We have increased demands on us for shopping, decorating, cooking, cleaning. Right. Parties, family reunion, house guests and all those types of things. And this can contribute to stress during the holidays as well. And so many times we can overextend ourselves or try to do this or try to please everyone. And sometimes that can add stress. 
And so, you know, then we have to deal with the general frustrations, right? If you're going to the mall, guess what? There's too much traffic. Why didn't y'all shop on Amazon, right? And so we, right, where well, it can be stress, right? You ever tried to go to the pro post office the week before? Oh, Lord, right? Uh, crowded malls, heavy traffic, right? Too much to do with too little time, right? And then feeling obligated to do everything, right? Those can contribute to stress that we feel during the holidays. Uh, what about financial pressure, right? We can feel uh, tempted to spend more than we should during the holidays, and that can contribute, right? And then we can also deal with debt afterwards as well. Uh, what else? Well, <coughs> here's a big one. <clears throat> we can feel stress because we're going to have to be with somebody or some person in particular during the holidays, right? We can be stressed out because of somebody that we haven't seen a lot during the year, but now because of the holidays, we're going to have to see them. Um, you know, recently I saw a stat that said 70, 70, 70% of Americans have relatives or in-laws who make holidays and family get-togethers stressful, difficult, and annoying. 70%. So if you have a crazy family member that you don't enjoy getting together with, guess what? Most everybody else does too, right? So unresolved conflicts with family members and sibling rivalries can cause problems, right? Misunderstandings with family that families have had. All of a sudden, people are separated, and all of a sudden, they're thrust together during the holidays, and that's a mixture for combustion, right? And so <clears throat> we... Those, all those things come into play to create stress for the holidays. So now let me give you a couple of solutions. What are some things that we can do to alleviate some of the stress uh, during the holidays? Well, first of all, have, I want to encourage you, <clears throat> have <clears throat> realistic and reasonable expectation of expectations for yourself, for others, and for the holidays in general. Have realistic expectations for yourself. You can't accomplish everything, right? Have realistic, you're going to get tired. So have realistic expectations for yourself, for others, and then for the holidays in general. You know, one of the things, my, Pastor Samantha and, and Annabelle, and I, I would say our family, but primarily Pastor Samantha and Annabelle, like is Hallmark Holidays. Hallmark Holidays. Well, we can see this, and I said, Hallmark holiday, everything's wonderful, everybody's happy, right? Well, you know, that's not reality, right? Uh, so we can, if we we need to be careful not to, you know, think, hey, my holiday is going to be a Hallmark holiday, it's going to be a Thomas Kincaid Christmas, it's going to be a Norman Rockwell New Year, right? We can have high expectations for the holidays that just are not going to come to pass, right? And we think we can do everything, right? So have realistic expectations, right? We think we're going to cook the perfect meal. We're going to answer every question just right. We're going to please everyone. We're going to select the perfect gift for everyone. We're going to remain happy, loving, giving, and energetic at every moment, at every time. How many of you know that's unrealistic expectations for yourself and for others, right? Um, we can often feel bad when our unrealistic expectations don't come to pass, right? And so I'm saying to you, make sure that we have realistic expectations. And then I said, have realist, realistic expectations of others, right? Uh, <clears throat> we need to have realistic expectations when we get together with some crazy family members. Now, thank God we all have sane, loving, wonderful family members. But as I read to you earlier, most family has some crazy family member. And if you don't know who that family member is, it's probably you. <laughs> it's probably you. But all of us have some type of crazy family member. And... Um, you know, stress comes when stress comes into our life when we expect annoying, foolish, mean, and thoughtless family members to all of a sudden become magically friendly, loving, caring, kind, and thoughtful just because it's the holidays. Right? Let me say that to you again. Stress can come when we expect annoying, foolish, mean, and thoughtless family members to suddenly be transformed just because it's Christmas into loving, friendly, kind, and thoughtful family members. Listen, here is the reality. It takes Jesus to change a person's life, not the holidays, 
right? Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. It takes Jesus to change somebody's life, not the holidays. And here's, here's a good reality check. If you're dealing with a foolish family member that's been foolish uh, the whole time that you've known them, then there's a good chance they're going to be foolish at the holidays and a good chance they're going to be foolish after the holidays, right? So we need to have expectations, right? We need to set boundaries with individuals, right? So they, they're, 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 we don't have, you know, the, the drama going on with it, right? What's something else we can do? Well, choose to have a good attitude, Right? I know, Pastor, why are you talking about attitude? Well, attitude is something you control. You get to control your attitude and you get to control your actions. Those are the two things that are in your control, right? No matter what goes wrong, no matter what people say, no matter what people do, no matter how people act, I can make the best out of the situation. I can respond and have the right attitude, right? I don't get to choose what people do to me, but I do, I do get to choose my attitude and response. In every situation, I get to choose my attitude and response, right? Let's go to James chapter 1. James chapter 1. I'm going to read verses 2 through 5 in the New Living Translation. It says, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles come your way, guess what? <laughs> Christmas, can we can have some troubles coming our way, right? <clears throat> when troubles come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. Consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. When your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. Let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. If you need wisdom, ask your generous God who will give it to you and he will not rebuke you for asking. So we can choose to have the right attitude. And if we choose to have the right attitude and we respond correctly, then what this verse tells us is that I, that's an opportunity for me to grow. I can grow through adverse situations. I can grow through dealing with annoying people, right? If I choose to have the right attitude. And then in the midst of it, God tells us, hey, if you need wisdom to know how to handle a situation, ask me. It says, if any of you lack wisdom, ask our generous God. Did you know you serve a generous God? He's a giver. And he will give you wisdom to know how to handle the situations that come up in your life. Amen. Number three, and you can never go wrong by walking in love, right? <clears throat> now, number three, <clears throat> give yourself permission to enjoy life and the holidays. Give yourself permission to enjoy the holidays, right? Sometimes we can all be upset about something, but we can just make an internal tweak. Psh, I just changed my attitude. Psh, I changed the way I'm going to respond. I'm going to let that go. I'm going to deal with that, right? Give yourself permission to enjoy the holidays in spite of imperfect people, imperfect circumstances, and imperfect um, performance on your part. Give yourself permission to enjoy the holidays. You know, every person's not going to respond right, so there's imperfect people. Every situation's not going to be right. Every circumstance is not going to be right. And you're not going to do exactly what you want to do in every situation, but give yourself the opportunity to enjoy the holidays and remember the reason for the season anyway, which is celebrating the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, who redeemed us, who transformed us, who forgave us, who gave us life and life more abundantly. Let's celebrate him, right? I like something author Max Lucado said. Max Lucado, he said this. It's, it's awesome. Listen to me close. He said, lower your expectations on earth. Lower your expectations on earth. This isn't heaven, so don't expect it to be. He said, lower your expectations on earth. This isn't heaven, so don't expect it to be, right? All right, number four. This is a big one, plan ahead. Plan ahead. One of the reasons that people get stressed out during the holidays is that we don't plan properly, right? Uh, if we're cooking for the holidays, plan things out. Make sure you go to the grocery store ahead of time. Recruit help right? Make allowances for mess up. Consider, and consider alternate plans if things don't go right. Make adjustments on the fly without getting stressed out. Uh, have somebody help, right? Uh, and, and remember, you know, as great as you are, you can't clone yourself, right? So recruit help. Amen, right? So plan properly. Number five, uh, <clears throat> find a way to serve, help, and be a blessing to others. One of the things that brings the greatest joy in a Christian's life is being able to be a blessing to others. 
I like to be a blessing to my family. I like to be a blessing to my wife and kids. I like to be a blessing to others, right? <clears throat> Not only does that do something for someone else, <clears throat> but it does something for me. It does something in me. Um, <clears throat> let's look at the Bible in Galatians chapter 5. <clears throat> Galatians chapter 5 and verse 13. The Bible says, For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. Guess what you're called to do? Serve one another. If you're a Christian, guess what you're supposed to be doing? Serve one another. Right? Notice it didn't say you've been called to have everyone serve you. Come on, somebody. It says we're called to serve one another. I like something that Albert Schweitzer says. Switzer, he said, I don't know what your destiny will be, but one thing I know, the only ones among you who will be really happy are those who have sought and found a way to serve. He said, I don't know what your destiny will be, but one thing I know, the only ones who will be really happy are the ones who have sought and found a way to serve. See, you were created to serve. So when you serve, it does something for the person you serve, but it does something in you. You're pleasing the Lord. You're obeying the command of God, right? And this is just an encouragement, but, and I know situations vary, but many times women carry a lot of the, the responsibility and load of Christmas. They're buying gifts, they're wrapping gifts, they're cleaning the house, they're cooking meals, right? And so they handle a lot of the things that really make Christmas wonderful and they do it. So I want to encourage husbands. I want to encourage kids and children and family members, right? Uh, look for ways to help serve the lady in your life, right? Look for ways to serve the lady in your life. Help clean up, right? Help prepare. Help clean the house, right? Um, look for ways to be a blessing and a help. And, and this is important. Look for ways to help and be a blessing and ask, can you help without the women asking you to do it? Can I have an amen? I heard all the women say, amen. Yes, right? Ask for ways. Hey, can I help you prepare? Help. Can I cl help clean up? Can I help do something? Can I run to the store for you, right? Look for ways to serve. Uh, number six, put some humor in the holidays, right? Put some humor in the holidays. You know, Proverbs 17, verse 22 says, a merry heart does good like medicine. A merry heart does good like medicine, right? So there's, there's a, a merry heart does good like medicine. What does medicine do? It helps us heal, right? So there's healing properties to having fun and to enjoying life and having a merry heart, right? And put some humor in the holidays. One of the things we do in the Herring household is we, we enjoy movies. So we enjoy some good, funny Christmas movies. One of our famous favorites is Home Alone. We usually watch it a couple of times during the holidays, right? And there's a great scene in there where he's having some, you know, some, I think the bad guys are coming or a piece of delivery guy or something. I can't remember for sure. But he puts on a scene from the movie and he goes, hey, you yellow belly thing, get out of here. I'm going to pump you full of lead. Right? Well, put some humor in the holidays, right? And so that may not be your favorite movie, but... There's Santa Claus and Jingle All the Way and Elf and How the Grinch Stole Christmas and Scrooge. I would I would recommend the Bill Murray version of that. But uh, the point is, have fun, be a blessing, enjoy your family, enjoy your friends, and celebrate Jesus. He is our helper. He's our deliverer. He's our strength. He's our all in all, right? And so finally, what does the Christmas story remind us about? Our relationship with Jesus Christ should be the first and foremost thing in our mind, right? And all of us can take an honest look at our lives and see how close we are to Jesus, how much he's staying on our mind, because our minds can be consumed with preparation and cleaning and gifts and seeing this party and going to this party and doing that and seeing this person, all that. But let us remember the reason for the season, and that is Jesus Christ. Is he first in our life, right? We need to make sure we maintain our relationship with the Lord. And we need to make sure that we are in fellowship with him. We return to the Lord, right? It's easy during this time of year to be distracted. It's easy during this time of year to be distressed. It's easy this time of year to become distant from the one that we are celebrating, right? I want to read two verses to you in Joel chapter 2, verse 13 in the New Living Translation. 
The Bible says, return to the Lord your God, for he is merciful and compassionate and slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. He's filled with unfailing love, right? Notice he said, return to the Lord. What did that imply? That people had gotten distant. You know, honestly, in our world, we can become distant from the Lord, the one that we're supposed to be celebrating at this Christmas time. Christmas time, and then Revelation two verse uh, th chapter three verse twenty. Revelation three verse twenty. The Bible says, <clears throat> Jesus said, "Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him." and he with me. God wants fellowship with you. God wants close relationship with you. And he's standing at the door and knocking. And you know, it's sad that he has, that he has to say, if anyone hears my voice. <clears throat> what I'm saying to you is we don't want to be so far from God this Christmas that we can't hear his voice. We want to be close to him. He's knocking at the, the, the door of our heart and fellowship with him. Let's open the door so he can come in and fellowship with us. So God is knocking. Are you listening? God is knocking. Will you open the door, right? And we've been talking about stress around the holiday seasons, and we've been talking about opened up with stress and, and how the very first Christmas, there was a lot of stress for all four of those individuals, Mary and Joseph and the shepherds and the wise men. <clears throat> but you know, they all had one thing in common. They all turned to God in the midst of things not being perfect. They all turned to God in the midst of things not being perfect, right? And God responded to each and every one of them. You know, Mary's stress was gone when she held the Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior in the world, of the world, in her arms. All her stress disappeared. All her fear disappeared. Joseph's anxiety was removed when he recognized he is the natural father of the Savior of the world right? The shepherd's fear was gone. They were greatly afraid. Their fear disappeared when they saw the Messiah. And the shepherd's exhaustion, their, their physical strength was renewed when they saw the master and presented the gifts before him. Amen. So no matter what you're going through, remember God loves you. He's here to help you. And when you return to him, he will not turn us away. So what I'm, at, what, I'm, what I'm saying to you this morning is make sure Jesus is the center of your life. Make sure that you are close to him. Make sure that we focus on him this Christmas season as we celebrate his birth and make sure that he's the focus of our life. And let us remember these words from Matthew 6, Let us seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things that be added to us. So let's keep our priorities right so God's blessings can flow into our life. And we can find that place of joy and fulfillment in him because we're in the middle of the will of God. Amen. Father, we thank you and praise you, Lord, for this morning. Thank you for the word of God that's so rich. Father, we love you. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for providing him on the cross. Jesus, we thank you for coming to this earth, leaving the grandeur of heaven to come here to serve us. And we thank you that through your life, death, burial, and resurrection, we have eternal life. We have a relationship with you. And we praise you and thank you. And we put you first in our life. We thank you for your birth this time of this time of year as we celebrate Christmas. We thank you for your birth and we thank you for your work in and through our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, if you're gathering with us this morning, you're not sure about your relationship with Jesus Christ. <clears throat> guess what? This message is for you today. Amen. All of us, regardless, every believer in Christ at some point came to a point in their lives where they recognize, I need a relationship with Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So if you're not sure about your relationship with Jesus this morning, or he's not been the sinner, you need to return to him, as the Bible says, return to the Lord your God. I want to pray for you this morning, and I, I'll pray, and then you pray after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I believe that you raised Jesus Christ from the dead. I confess him now as my Lord and Savior. And I commit this day to love you, to serve you, and to know you better. Thank you, Father, that I'm saved. And I praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Amen. Well, if you prayed that prayer, we are so excited for you. I want to ask you to go to our website at AbundantChurch.org. That's A-B-U-N-D-A-N-T-C-H-U-R-C-H dot O-R-G, AbundantChurch.org. There's a contact button. Click that contact button. Send us an email. Let us know, hey, I received Christ. Hey, I returned to the Lord. I rededicated my life. Let us rejoice with you. Also, it's investment time into the kingdom of God. Praise the Lord for the time. You know, during this time of year, the Bible says, let me say this. The Bible says in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave, right? See, <clears throat> the, the essence of giving is love. The essence of giving is love, right? And so God loved us so much that he gave. And during this time of year, we're giving gifts to people we love, our family, our friends, different individuals, uh, to express our gratitude, to express our love. Well, you know what? We can also give to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, right? What better time of year to sell a special offering than, than right now as we celebrate the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's bless the kingdom of God and show our love for God today. You know, the Bible talks about tithing. What is tithing? It's giving 10% of our income. The Bible talks about giving an offering. An offering is anything you give above that. Uh, that's considered a gift, right? And so <clears throat> this morning, we have that opportunity uh, to give to the kingdom of God, to advance the kingdom of God. And there's different ways that you can give. Uh, you can go to probably the easiest way is to go to our website at AbundantChurch.org, A-B-U-N-D-A-N-T-C-H-U-R-C-H dot O-R-G. There's a give icon. You can click that give icon. It's real safe, simple, and easy to use. Amen. But however you give, thank you for your consistent and faithful giving that empowers us to minister the life-changing word of God and to lead people to a committed relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. Let me pray for you as you give this morning. Father, we thank you and praise you that you gave us the greatest gift and the most needed gift, and that was the Lord Jesus Christ. And today, Father, we honor you by bringing our tithes. We honor you by presenting you with a gift and an offering today. And Father, we thank you that you open the windows of heaven, pour our great blessing on our life. Thank you for positioning us to be a greater blessing in the days ahead. We rejoice in you, and we thank you for the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Finally, we want you to know that Pastor Samantha and I and our whole team, we're so thankful for you. We want to wish you a very Merry Christmas. We love you so much. And until we're able to share the Word of God again with you, please know we love you. We're praying for you. And God bless you.